The lady said she would be interested in me fixing her TV. Yeah, with a Shannon. Or we could head to the Zero. Hmm. Well, that seems to be our main goal for now anyway. So I guess I can go to the... Um, I can go to Shannon's place first. Up north a ways by the lake. Right where Peonia and Wax Road meet. Okay. If we're fixing the TV, <laughs> we're not even bringing the TV with us. Okay. Wax and uh, this one? Oh, hold on. Oh, what in the world? <laughs> I'm going all over the place. A creek runs alongside the highway and then turns toward a dirty brick building. A grinding drone from within the building is faintly audible from the interstate. Floodlights on the lawn illuminate smokestacks. At the edge of the building's parking lot, a large sign, partly obscured by trees, reads Amur Artificial Limb Factory. Oh, we are on the road to Kentucky Route Zero. The first right after the factory. But let's go check out Shannon's place first. By the lake. By the lake. Will we know a lake when we see one? Okay, this is the really- this is the north is north already. Uh-oh. Am I that bad at following directions? <laughs> Hang on. Bait and Tackle Shop. Peonia and Wax Road. Yeah, it just says up in the north. The lake is over here, maybe? Because I see some, like, non- like, grayish stuff here. Priceville. Grayson Springs. Wax Road. Bait Shop. Conway pulls into the bait shop parking lot. Vaulted above the road on a thin steel bar, a handwritten sign reads, Live Bait. Minnows small and also large for stripers, night crawlers, chips and beer. A green flyer hangs loosely from a bit of masking tape at eye level. To the shop's right, a dirt parking lot sprawls unevenly into the grass and then eventually trees. The bait shop is open. Oh, what is a bait shop? Conway reads the flyer. Computer printed type in a bold font surrounds a clip art illustration of a TV set. The TV has eyes, arms and legs. Its shoulders are slouched. On the screen is a cartoon expression of exhausted nausea. A hot water bottle rests against its wire antenna. TV repair. No model too old. Inquire within. We do not sell digital converter boxes. Conway enters a bait shop. Narrow aisles crowded with lures, reels and rods, snacks divide the shop lengthwise from the entrance to the cashier's counter. The left wall is lined with churning tanks of water. The three metal tanks aren't labeled, and the water is too agitated to get a clear view of what's inside each one. The contents of the first tank are vaguely gray. The second is a muddy pink. The third is clear, but shiny silver flecks occasionally flash along its surface. Reach in? Is that such a good idea? Okay, the first one is gray. The second one is pink. The third one is clear with shiny silver flecks. Conway reaches into the first tank. Conway's hand brushes against something roughly the size of his palm. Ooh. Conway reaches deeper into the tank. Conway's hand comes into contact with a scaly, uneven surface. As he runs his fingers along the bottom, a bead of sweat 
bridges the inches from his temple to the water's surface. Something bites at his forearm. He recoils. Ooh. Fish. Conway reaches into the second tank. Conway's fingers slip through something fleshy but inert. The sensation is nauseating. This is the pink one. Conway reaches deeper into the tank. As his elbow passes into the pinkish mass, he realizes he's about to be sick from the smell and pulls away. The third one looks dangerous, the silver stuff. The water seems to tremble with life. Conway can't tell if his hand is being nibbled by fish or massaged by the artificial current. As his eyes near the surface of the water, he can see something colorful glowing faintly at the bottom of the tank. Conway reaches deeper. A tremor spreads out from his elbow to his fingertips and up to the base of his shoulder. His vision flickers. The water is running warm under his skin now and he has a sensation that something is about to snap. His eyes close. He lays on a rooftop. New shingles rough beneath his back, swelling in the noon sun. He is exhausted. They must have started before dawn. His legs are sore from holding stable on the uneven surface, his wrists from breaking old sealant, his fingers from carefully lifting shingles to hammer down new ones. His boss, Ira, yells from the idling truck below. He shades his eyes with his hand. A beer would be good. It's barely past noon, but he's working a full day already. What could the harm be? Maybe a shot at the counter, just to get his eyes open, then a beer. He could offer to drive into town for lunch and stop at that place on Cumberland. The cashier pushes Conway roughly on the shoulder. He's been talking, yelling maybe, but it's all an echo now. Conway looks up, his neck stiff with pain, his right palm still tingling. The cashier points to the tank, then above to it, a few holes torn in the wall, nail holes from which an electric sign has come dislodged and fallen into the water. Ooh! Was he being electrocuted? Having some sort of flashback about his past. He helps Conway to his feet, looks at him pitifully, and returns to the cashier, and returns to the cash register. Narrow aisles crowded with lures. Oh yes, a bait shop, like fishing bait. Lure, okay. Conway approaches the counter. A wiry cashier stands behind the register, preoccupied with a Sudoku puzzle. Conway asks about Shannon Marquez's workshop. A handwritten sign on the door behind the counter reads, TV repairs by appointment. Please consult with cashier. The cashier knocks a few times on the door and waits, occasionally glancing at his puzzle. After a few moments with no answer, he notices a smaller note written on the sign, reads it, then points it out to Conway. Weaver, I got your message. Have left for the old mine. Don't know if I will see you there or what. Ready either way. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> Conway asks about the basketball game. The cashier switches on the radio. An AM sports broadcast is playing, but Conway can't be sure if it's meant to answer or to drown on his questions. Well, that's that. We're leaving, and we're not getting the TV fixed. Because... We can't. Hmm. Drive away. Conway drives away. Did we learn a new location? Not really. Yeah, so Shannon got Weaver's note, but I guess we're not really making any progress on the front with the TV. No. Well, in that case, we only have one place to go. Kentucky... Route Zero. I'm just taking the long way here, because we might find something we never expected to find. You don't know until you try. All sorts of weird things around here. But it seems like that is it.
All right. So the zero, that was as soon as we meet the factory, we make a right. Yup. On ramp. Act one, scene three. Dark and creepy. Conway brushes some dirt off Homer's hat. Take it easy, Homer. Oh. Is that it? How's it going, Homer? Huh. Not sure that lady was right about the on-ramp to the Zero being here. Better look around, though. Must be down here somewhere. Better hurry, though. Weather is about to turn. Alright. Ooh. Shannon, the mines! Shannon speaks into the large brick cell phone, held up to her ear. Oh, okay, our first sign that maybe the time period is not current day. Yeah, it kind of is an emergency. Oh, <laughs> I clicked on the wrong one. No, it's fine, I'll figure it out. But can I trust him to not just change the locks? Just... never mind. I have to go. Sorry. Changing the locks? Somebody in her house? Oh, okay. I'm actually playing a Sharon now. Or a Shannon. Excuse me, ma'am. I saw the light was on, and I'm looking for the on-ramp to... Are you here to kick me off the property? Oh, no, no. I guess you don't belong here either, do you? Are you just out wandering? Ha, huh, well, I do drive a lot. Just me on the road mostly, when the sun is out. Is that your job? Driving? Here's what it is. I drive deliveries for a shop named Lysette's Antiques, and I'm out trying to finish this job. What kind of stuff are you hauling? Antiques. Good stuff. Lysette has a sharp eye for the little good it's done her lately, you know. It's just one recession after another. Everybody's selling their old stuff cheap, but no one's really buying. I have a delivery for 5 Dogwood Drive, and I can't remember ever seeing that address before. Now I heard I need to take a highway called the Zero. So I met this young lady, name of Weaver Marquez. And she sent me this way, and so here I am. Uncommon kind of place for an on-ramp, but that's what it's been like so far anyway, with... What? Oh, I'm Conway again. Um, we know they're cousins. The Zero, is that around here? I've never heard of the damn Zero. That doesn't sound like a real highway. But I know Weaver. I've known her all my life. She was... She's my cousin. I'm Shannon Marquez. Was? Weaver doesn't lie. One time, when we were younger, she told me my dad had been in a terrible car wreck. There was crushed metal everywhere, and we'd be hearing it echo through the house for years, she said. I was very upset, crying, and then my dad walked in the door, just come back from a trip to the junkyard collecting scrap metal to fashion into wind chimes. I was angry, but she said it wasn't a joke, and it wasn't a lie. At the time, I thought she meant it as a riddle or a puzzle. 
Oh, is that the accident that we saw in the beginning? Next to the gas station? So, Weaver here said that her dad was dead, but then the same day her dad came back. But I'm guessing her dad died later on. Some kind of fortune telling? Prophecy thing? But Weaver's not a puzzle. She's a mystery. Huh. So what are you doing down here, Shannon? I talked to Weaver earlier this evening too. Or anyway, she talked to me. It's hard to tell if she's listening sometimes. Weaver told me I had to come down here to the old Eckhorn mine. She said I'd find something I'd been looking for. Yes, we saw that on the note in her bait shop. What are you looking for? I'm not exactly sure. I have a few ideas. I'll know it when I see it. I want to ask about both things, but realistically, we can only pick one. So I gotta pick the thing that I think is more important. It's not such a bad thing, you showing up now. All told, I'd rather not go down there alone. Your dog should stay up here though. It's no place for a dog. This is an old mine. It runs pretty deep and tangled. If we're going to go down into it, find your on-ramp and whatever else, we've got to keep our bearings. I don't want to get turned around. I've got some gear here to measure connectivity, frequency response, stuff like that. Maybe we can find a way to put a signal out ahead, do some analysis and figure out what kind of topology we're up against. Whoa, she knows her stuff. <sighs> topology, okay. Topology. That's the science of continuous space, my friend. The way this twisty maze of passages fits together. Well, Homer, maybe you don't want to follow us. Do we have a lamp, by the way? P.A. That runs into the mine's P.A. system. Do you think it still works? Only one way to find out. Alright, give it a whirl. Um, is anybody down there? Nothing. Hmm. Oh, there's no power. Yeah, okay. Even when this old mine was up and running, it was tricky to keep stuff powered. You know, the miners used to have to pay just to run the fans and the lights. Yeah, they got paid in these shitty plastic tokens. Coal strip, you know? And if you want to run the fans for a bit to clear the air up, well, you have to put a token in. Whoa. My parents used to work here. So did Weaver's parents. I guess a lot of folks' parents work here. Can we power it up? I bet we just have to free up some power for the PA system. Everything is rationed here. Here, set up that lamp of yours and I'll go unplug these ceiling lights. Hmm. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> I heard the speakers back here crackle a bit. It's on now, right? Try saying something into the mouthpiece. Well... Okay, I hear you. We need to measure the echo delay time and figure out how deep the tunnels run. Just make some noises into the mouthpiece. Conway taps the mouthpiece. Conway hums a deep tone into the mouthpiece. Conway whistles. Damn, that's a long delay. These tunnels run deep. I bet some of them have ruptured or joined up with a cave system. Alright, I set up my spectrum analyzer 
So just say something into the mouthpiece and we can get a sense for how narrow the mine tunnels are. Don't be shy. Just say anything that comes to your head. Tell me a story about something. Or what did you have breakfast today? Hmm. Here is a story. I used to work doing roof repair. Oh, that's why we were thinking about how we were on the roof earlier? Hmm. We even fixed up a church roof once. It seemed like a big project, but doable. But then a thunderstorm hit, and it was too late anyhow. Got it. Looks like the tunnels are pretty cramped. Yeah, low ceilings. Hope you're ready to stoop a bit. Uh, you're probably used to it. One more test. We just need to know if the air is breathable, or if it's too thin or too dense. Just sit real close to the mouthpiece and breathe. I'll measure the resonance of your breath with the air in the tunnels. Just try to relax. Try to breathe naturally. Conway breathes and remembers a moment when he was younger. Getting some pretty strong readings here. I think we're in good shape, but keep at it for a minute. Conway breathes and visualizes a hot meal. Oh! Whatever. Conway breathes and relaxes as a peel of feedback and loose rock engulfs him. Were we breathing too loudly? Jesus! Are you alright? What the hell? I'm okay. I've got you. You're alright. Shit. Your leg is pinned. I'm gonna pull you out. We have to get you out of here. There you go. Okay. Are you hurt? Can you put any weight on that leg? Uh, it's fine. Oh, it's all dark right now because the... Um, everything messed up. I think the mines might have fallen apart. Just try to stand up. Careful. I'm right here. Damn. Don't worry. I got you. That leg is in bad shape. Here. Let's get you onto the tram. There you go. Now, let's see if this thing has power. Well, okay, that's some luck, right? We should be able to ride this tram right out one of the auxiliary exits, if there are any. I think there are. What about Weaver? We'll just find the exit, and then figure out what to do from there. That's our first priority. What do you mean, what about Weaver? She's not here, is she? So, the controls are over on your side. Let's get moving. Tram. <laughs> Got my lamp. Oh, I have to keep clicking on it. This whole thing so far has been really surreal. We've been wandering around what I assume to be Kentucky, and now we've teamed up with a Shannon. I'm looking for an on-ramp, Shannon's looking for... something. 
And we've both been directed here by a mysterious lady named Weaver. Weaver. That name must be on purpose too. Somebody who is weaving events and people together. Man, does this thing go any faster? Kind of scared though. Like how far down are we in the mines? Turntable. Oh, here we are. This may be hard to believe. It's hard for me to believe myself. But this whole branch was underwater last I heard. Oh, that's why there's like a canoe thing here. How did that happen? Some careless miner or some unattended machine bore through into an underground lake. The water came in pretty fast, and a lot of folks got trapped in the tunnels. I only heard parts of how it went from there. Sanitized for the bereaved. You know how big these companies are. But there was gossip too. The trapped miners couldn't get the pumps going because the power was rationed, so they shut all the lights off. But even then, it wasn't enough. So I guess it was dark when they... Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It doesn't matter now. Yeah, so she does know the people there. Especially because her parents... Her parents were here before. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter now. Look, this old turntable is still wired up. The controls are dead, but I can use my signal generator to switch tracks. If the water hasn't damaged it too much. Or we can just keep heading down this tunnel. All this junk hanging around the turntable is from the company store. Just junk, you know? The miners would buy it and use it to decorate the place, or as landmarks. I guess. Hard to know which way is which down here. It's all so dim and gray. Shannon connects two clip leads from her signal generator to the turntable's electrical panel. We're on the track between the animal bones and the rowboat, so... Whoa! What the heck? The pendulum and the casket? Ooh! Oh, we're turning, yeah. We don't know which way we're going for any direction though, so is it a good idea for us to be turning to begin with? Especially one called the pendulum and the casket. Oh my god. We were on the animal bones and the rowboat. Okay, well, let's just go with pendulum and the casket for now. That sounds really... Scary. And I don't know if we can come back here or not. Ugh. We don't even know what we're looking for down here. There's very little context for anything we're doing. Oh my gosh. We're going down though. Deeper into the mines. My finger is getting tired. A dusty reel-to-reel -reel tape player is stashed between beneath the track, loaded with the tape but starved for power. We need power. Oh, I can click in front of me too. Bruh. Oh no, this is the end of the road. Oh. Hmm. We need to get electricity somehow. Well, we're not getting it by coming here. Ah, my gosh, I can just click in front of me. <laughs> what have I been doing this whole time? Now we're going much faster.
Okay, so we'll remember that there's a tape player between the pendulum and the casket. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe they're like messages from dying people. Because a lot of people die down here. Let's try the bat feeder and the scarecrow. Shannon seems like she's pretty young, and Weaver said they were the same age before. But Conway? He has gray hairs, so he's pretty old. Yeah, look at this speedy thing go. Oh. Broken track. The tracks are all messed up here. This tram isn't going any further. I wonder what's down that tunnel. Again, another one that we can't find out about. So I guess uh, we have to go to the original place that we were going to, to begin with. The Animal Bones one. But if we get electricity, we should come back to the pendulum. Animal bones and the rowboat. They're talking about the stuff around our surroundings right now, <laughs> but it's not very clear. You can see some of them, but not all of them. You can see the scarecrow right here. Okay, so this is the original path that we were going. We're going up. That should be a good sign. Do we ever want to turn off the lights? Oh my goodness. That's a little bit too romantic for me. Out already? Well, what about the tape player? Mm, before we get out of here, I want to figure that out first. There must be something I'm missing. Maybe I can turn off the lights, because that's been something that I never used, and if I turn off the lights... They mentioned earlier that the power had to be rationed, right? So maybe if I turn off the lights, then I can listen to it. Right, so if I turn off the lights... Wait, what was that? I saw people. Oh my god. I didn't know those were still down here. You've been down here before? Or uh, what was that? Look, there's a tape player down there. One of those old reel-to-reel -reel setups. When this mine was active, a couple of folk music archivists spent time here recording miners' songs. Really academic, ivory tower types. None of the miners really talked to them much. So they stayed at the margins, observed, took notes, and then sometimes they'd get someone on a lunch break to sing into their microphone. And then I guess the power company got some kind of interest in the project and gave the archivists some kind of coal strip tokens to pay the miners with for their songs. Ooh. 
Did your parents sing? Oh, uh, yeah. They sang. They sang in the mine for coal strip tokens. Hmm. Well, I'm glad we got that one out of the way. Although earlier, when I turned the lights off, I swear I saw something. No? Alright. I thought I saw a person down here, but I don't know. Everything is so, like, shadowy and dark. Anyway, we've already looked at everything, so let's get to the exit. Thank god. Okay. Let's go. Yeah, okay. I just... That tunnel. Where the tracks were broken. I'd like to take a look down there. But we just went there! Um... So I can be Conway, or I can be Shannon. Well, if Shannon's the one going down, I guess I'll be her. Sure, okay. I'll be right here. There's no lights. Is that a phone tone? That sounds like a telephone. Oh. Right, the weather is getting really bad here, isn't it? Where's Shannon? Was Shannon looking for her parents down there? Hmm. Well, she did find some people, although we don't know who they were. Miners. The cramped shack is lined with wooden shelves. Dusty stacks of tape reels and notebooks crowd the room but a bit of moonlight filters through a window near the ceiling. On a small desk in the middle of the room lay three notebooks. The red one is labeled J. Marquez. Oh, the green one is labeled R. Marquez, and the blue one is unlabeled. Conway opens. Shannon! Conway opens the red notebook. The pages are covered in disorganized notes, some written horizontally, and others scribbled vertically into margins. A few pages are lined up more evenly and divided into charts, correlating seasons, lyrics, harmonies, and coal halls. On each page is a delicately rendered charcoal drawing. Most are portraits of rugged faces near the middle of the book. There are a few drawings of a young girl in a miner's helmet. Shannon? She plays along the minecart tracks, collecting pieces of wire. In one drawing, another young girl sits nearby, intently studying a book. Maybe Shannon and Weaver? Conway opens the blue notebook. The notebook is full of Greek letters and cryptic mathematical formulas. Near the back of the book, what first looks like it might be... Oh yeah, this place. These notebooks are labeled Marquez. Your parents are the archivists? No, Weaver's parents are the archivists. My parents were miners. How's a leg? I can walk on it, but it's slow. Well, I'll try not to get too far ahead of you. You don't mind my hitching a ride, do you? I kinda got a lift out here and wasn't sure if, uh, when I'd be heading back. I can drive. Oh, she didn't plan on coming back? Yeah, maybe that's best. Yeah, when you drive, you sit down, you don't really use your leg, but still, the stuff like the gas pedal and the brake, the best not to risk it. Don't worry, I've been driving since I was nine. Hmm, I guess I should look for another route to Dogwood Drive. Yeah, alright. 
Well, maybe asking Weaver about the zero was a wrong place to start. Maybe we should just ask her for specific directions. Her answers are complicated enough without a layer of indirection at the question. I saw Weaver at my workshop, that's up north by Lake Nolan, right at Wax and Peonia, in the back of a bait shop. Pretty glamorous, right? These are the times we live in. Yeah, people don't seem to be doing too well in these times. She's either up there or back at the farmhouse. Whichever you want to head to first, just let me know. Whichever one's the closest. Oh, wanna, wanna play with a doggy? Oh, okay, I'm still Conway. I should probably go get my leg fixed up though. Lysette's Antiques. I guess this is your truck? Surprised? It's kinda old. No, I'm not surprised. I guess it's an antique too. <laughs> I think it suits you. Homer, this is Shannon. Nice to meet you, Homer. I've got some dried banana slices in my bag. Would you like one? Take care of your friend here, and there's more of where that came from. Right. More? How's it going, Homer? Sorry I left you alone pretty long. Hurt my leg pretty bad down there. What did you get into up here? Did you find any rabbits? Conway has places to go. If the farmhouse is closer to us, maybe we should just go there. The farmhouse is right there, yeah. Scene 5. I think we're getting close to the end here. Ooh, that leg is not doing too hot. I think we should get the leg fixed up before making our delivery though. Seems kind of dangerous. Are we not going up more? Oh, Shannon's carrying me. So we can walk a little bit faster. By the way Shannon talks about Weaver, it doesn't sound like she's dead or anything, but she definitely was mysterious when we first saw her. There's nobody buried here, you know. It's decorative, I guess. Or it's art or something. I don't know. What are the names on the headstones? Nowakowski, Padilla. I don't know those names. Maybe the people who lived here before? I know when they brought this property, it already had a house and everything. Or maybe they have some other symbolic meaning. Oh, and look at the headstone. Marquez. I used to think that was for my parents. Now, I don't know. Maybe there are names for the future. Mm. Oh, Shannon's not coming with. We haven't slept the whole night.
Can you fix the TV while you're at it? She's not here. So, this is where she was? Yeah, makes sense. This was where Weaver and her parents lived. They took out a bunch of loans, you know, and had this place built. Do you have any debts? I never really had any collateral. Something to be said for that, I guess. My parents were like that, until the company store found a way to get to them. For my dad, it was tokens to run the fans and air purifiers, and for my mom, it was the canaries. Two solutions to the same problem, but they sure sounded different. Weaver had debt too, a lot of it, all tuition. She said she was a mathematician or something? Yeah. She studied some esoteric stuff about something about using math to translate between Spanish and English. I think eventually Weaver put those math skills to work on all the red numbers in the family checkbook and got a clear sense of just how hopeless their situation was. So she left. I guess she just drove away in the middle of the night. They woke up in the morning and the car was gone. Never came back. Until tonight. Someone else told me to come here and talk to her. Huh, okay. I guess we two aren't the only ones she's been talking to. We don't know. Okay, so it's still not confirmed that Weaver is actually back here. Oh, that's not something you see every day. That old TV right there. Well, that is a damned antique for you. I had a model like that in the shop once, but I had to sell it off to make rent. Most painful decision I ever made. Say, do you mind if I open it up? Looks like the dials are all corroded and the screen is leaking light a bit. Come on. I bet Lysette would never forgive you for letting a specimen like that fall into this repair. Go ahead. Oh yeah, these tubes are all messed up. Look like they've been in a swamp or a cave or something. There's moss growing on this one. That's okay. I have a few spares in my bag here. Here, I pulled this one out of an old computer monitor. Just needs to be recalibrated a bit. Okay, that ought to... should be seeing something now. Are you seeing anything? Um, a little bit to the left? Damn, okay. <laughs> Here, I think the contacts are dirty. Now don't go telling my customers I clean off old vacuum tubes with spit. There, just gotta turn it north-south and... Whoa, whoa! <gasps> Kentucky Route Zero! It's not that we're looking for Kentucky Route Zero specifically, though, although that ended up being the case. We're just trying to make a delivery to Dogwood. End of Act 1. Huh. Really interesting little title here, although... Not really sure what to make of all of it because it's very, very surreal and dreamlike. Mm-hmm. The atmosphere is definitely really cool, but I'm not sure if we know anything about where this is going to go at all. We have Conway, a delivery guy, trying to make a delivery to Dogwood. And we have Shannon, the TV repair woman, at the bait shop. But along the way, there's been some weird happenings and just overall strangeness. Aside from the four acts, there are some interlude episodes too, so I guess I'll try to play them in the order that they came out in. And uh, we'll try to figure out some semblance of a story here 
Mm-hmm. See you next time.